guys, Tom Way 601, and today we're out in the Ramat, the brand new Tier 5 Pan-Asian Cruisers. Figure we want to try at least to get a game in each one of these boats. Wargaming were so kind to uh, give the CCs um, the access to all of them, so might as well make a video featuring each one. If you weren't around for the Tier 6 video, Commander we are running is, well, the good old Chen Shua Khan. Um, I think in this one I'm still running Mimbelli, though personally I've also been uh, experimenting with running Makawa uh, in the first inspiration slot. Still running Belfast just because uh, when you get close company, it's nice to be able to reduce the, uh, the your ability to be detected in the smoke by so much. So... And also one other thing I realize with with that commander build, we are being very inefficient because our third tier uh, has to do with the uh, the torpedo reload booster. And of course, Ramat does not have a torpedo reload booster. You get that the first time at tier six. So if you're if you're working your way through the line chronologically like you would expect to. Uh, final slot you may want to go get that extra smoke time but here i because i've been bouncing around to all the ships i i would definitely i didn't feel like switching out the commander because there's the the one skill i'm sorry anyways uh, we can see chung king the tier four version of this ship uh struggling to get himself concealed within his smoke we flip over to the ap um ap on ramat surprisingly strong it's one thing um i think people are a little bit sleeping on, on these boats. HE is pretty strong, but if you can get a ship in the right angle, uh, you know, the AP can still be devastating. It, it can still really punch through, and there we go. We go ahead, finish off uh, the Chuang King. So, Ramat, what do you need to know? Well, it has five two-barreled 133-millimeter guns. Um, they're going to... That's going to pen with HE about 22 millimeters of armor, 10% uh, chance to set fire. So a very healthy chance to set fire, especially down here at the lower tiers, uh, you know, with 10 guns, all having 10% chance to set fire. You can statistically almost guarantee a fire if you hit every single shell. Um, but of course, we do have to also talk about, you know, there's a uh, counter fire ability from uh, enemy holes that they have a fire resistance, but you have a very good chance to set a good number of fires with these ships. Uh, other other things that it does have, it does have the trademark deep water torpedoes, 10.2 uh, kilometers on this boat, 1600 damage. Reload in around a minute or just over a minute. So pretty respectable there. And then finally, the other thing that you need to know about Ramat as well, She's an AA platform. Ramat, based on the British light cruiser Dido, a ship that I do hope we get into the game someday soon, uh, just because I like the British light cruisers. But she's based on a uh, British light cruiser, and uh, Dido's an AA platform. So she has very respectable AA, uh, 139 uh, DPM when it comes up close. Uh, I think it technically outranks uh, Dallas in AA. It doesn't do as much damage as Dallas total, but a lot more of its damage is concentrated in its further out ranges, meaning you're probably going to do, end up doing more damage to planes over time than you would in something like Dallas, which is frankly pretty impressive, especially down at tier five where, uh, you know, carriers are, especially with things like Ark, Ark Royal, which there's a whole thing on that, uh, a menace. So yeah. That's that's Ramat. Let's go ahead and get into the game. So uh, you saw early we uh, got into a pretty good uh, kill with the Chung King, and now we have what is going to be uh, the bearer of this match. What we're going to be up against a division of three Hugas, because nothing says pub stomping uh, in standard. I mean, there's not really non pubs to to stomp around, but nothing says. Uh, we want to win in our fun battleship division, like three Yukas, um, all sticking together. So we're going to be beginning to engage, try to get some fires on these these guys, uh, using the smoke for cover, kind of setting ourselves offset right here. We're, we're kind of exploring, seeing what the AP can do while he was somewhat broadside. But now that he's flattening out, uh, we're going to go ahead 
kind of turn in and uh, probably start to get out of here as we see that other Huga now down to a very low amount of health. Try to get the torpedo launcher off. See if we can get a hit with these long range torpedoes. They are incredibly long range, especially for a cruiser down at this tier. So if we could get a hit with these deep water torps, it would be incredible. The one issue uh, with this is, well, there is an airplane. There are airplanes out and about and they can very easily spot torpedoes for, uh, for their teammates, um, especially if they're providing some good cover. So we're going to get a fire started on this Yuga, try to get him to burn his damage gun, try to get him to start burning down. They're not really engaging. He's not really engaging us right now. That's exactly what we want. Uh, gun, gun, tr gun traverse speed on Hugo on, uh, Ramat, not the best. You can see we kind of rotated heart. We started, uh, changing the side we were firing on a little bit ago and we are struggling to get the front guns on target um you know five turrets there is a predominance of this ship uh you know the majority of its fire is off of its nose so that is kind of where you want to stick uh towards naturally you want to like try to lead into the action and use your front guns uh they are in that nice stepped configuration which means you can fire all three nose in which isn't too bad uh, the one thing I would lead you caution to, though, is it's usually easier to hit a boat when it's coming towards you and not away from you. And uh, guys, Ramat, well, she uh, she is made of explodium. She will she will happily go boom. Uh, she's not she's not one to uh, really hold up very well. Uh, we're attracting the first attention. From the anime aircraft carrier here we go ahead and pop our uh extended aa or our enhanced aa that is one of the other consumables uh ramat has and we are gonna go ahead and just start chewing through this enemy squadron right here uh believe we it ends up being a ranger that we are up against and as you can see we handled that full squadron with relative ease and now we are just trying to find an angle that we can start doing some damage to this division of Hugas will take our shots at Hatsuharu, but we know the primary target at this point is uh, is going to be the the enemy Hugas, especially that one that is just holding on for the dearest of life. I'm pretty sure that Hats Hatsuharu was giving him the good old will to rebuild, and now that other Huga is well within the range of his teammates. Uh, uh, will to rebuild. So we're gonna try come out over onto this this corner. See if we can set something up over here. Use our smoke to to start to burn them down. Uh, we are kind of starting to attract the attention of the enemy aircraft. He's going in on our other cruiser that is still alive, and we're gonna start to poke our nose around this island here once again, trying to find that little bit of angle that we can on this division of uh, this division of Hugas. Also getting some pretty good engagement time now on this uh, squadron of uh, squadron of torpedo bombers. If we can start to deplane the enemy carrier, that will be nice. He's he is a ranger, therefore that reload time, the the recovery time, is fairly long for him. So every single plane we can cost him is another. And hello there, ranger, baby. Well, we found ourselves a brand new target. Let's go ahead and start to engage him. Um, those Hugas won't be able to really protect him. Uh, Hatsuharu, we see, is going to smoke up and try to start to engage us. That's fine by us. We have bigger problems to worry about. And besides, it's not like we have sonar to try and uh, push his smoke. So we are going to go ahead. Now that Ranger is well within our spotting range, we can see we have plenty of pen to go straight through his deck with the HE. We don't even need to worry about trying to find the uh, the AP. And, well, our, our other friendly cruiser is popping out right over here. And that looks like a delicious meal of torpedoes that he's going to end up eating. Down goes our friendly Leander, unfortunately. And now uh, we we just need we just need to start uh, getting this ranger down. He's going to start throwing everything he has at us naturally, and that's okay. Uh, we will happily take it. As once again, we are an AA platform. If he wants to throw his planes at us, we'll happily take it. And hello there. Are those citadels I spot? Absolutely. It turns out we have enough pen to actually uh, get some citadels 
on the Ranger. Uh, he's He is starting to make some range from us. We can't really start chasing him because those, uh, those enemy uh, battleships are do have the potential to really hurt us if we get into direct line of sight of them. So we do want to be cautious, but we do get a fire right there. And I was like, at this point, I'm like, oh, we get a fire and we're starting to tick up. And uh, one thing you may forget or not realize, or, you know, one of those things is fires are incredibly dangerous to carriers. They have the auto proc, uh, the auto proc fire chance. So if you can manage to uh, hit one of, if you can manage to proc a fire and then get another fire to proc, that fire will uh, burn forever. And uh, we'll do a pretty significant amount of damage to the carrier and they can't heal it back. We end up taking down uh, the next Huga right there, um, which is absolutely wonderful. We can still, we can still see. Uh, well, we pull up the double strike right there with the Ranger up to three kills. <laughs> and uh, well, now it's just us and our friendly carrier, and uh, it's not its not looking too good. I was, at this point, I was like, okay, well, we still have a carrier. Hopefully, he starts fleeing towards us. Um, he can stay not spotted by the enemy. You guys, he can provide spotting for me, and maybe, maybe we can go ahead and eke this out. Uh, we'll, we'll see, we can see we can kind of start uh, making, making, trying to arc our shells over. We get that first fire on that rear Hugo right there. Once again, he's he's a very damaged one. If we can get him down, uh, we have some pretty good prospects. We're, we're in for a chance, if you will. Uh, torpedoes coming in from that Hatsuharu. Unfortunately, um, our teammate uh, ends up going down in that Hugo. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, is he able to pull off another heal. So we're gonna start coming around the corner here, trying to take cover. Uh, and you know, use what spotting we can because, of course, now we are the only thing left. Things are not looking good. We get some nice overpens there from him, uh, which is good for us. But if you've played these boats before, you know, at this point, this match is all but lost. Uh, we get dropped by the enemy carrier there. We're gonna try to turn around uh, right on over here. We can see Hatsuharu is uh, starting to poke out. We're gonna drop these torps in case this Hugo is coming through the gap right here. And well, there we go. That's how quick it can be. Um, so yeah, guys, that is that is Ramat. Uh, I like these ships. They are they are all about the positioning, uh, but you can absolutely end up being caught out. We end the game with 1,695, which beats out the majority of the enemy team, which we will absolutely take. Anyways, guys, if you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. See ya.